Do you own a Tesla? If so, comment down below. Tell me how often you use the self-drive feature because my personal opinion, I would never be able to take my hands off the wheel. Couldn't do it, I don't trust technology at all. I'm Taylor McWaters, you know what it is, let's do this. Here are the top 10 concerning inventions that prove we're living in the future, right now. Here we are. Number 10, plastic eating robot fish. I mean, the name gives this one away pretty fast. Let's do it. The robot fish that eats plastic. This sounds like the perfect solution to fight back. No more garbage islands the size of Texas. What a dream, right? This idea came from researchers at Sichuan University in China. The fish robot can actually absorb microplastics while it's swimming through water gracefully, dare I say. And if that wasn't cool enough, these robots would ideally transport these pollutants, you know, from one place to another place. It's kind of like Uber for plastic pollutants. I like that word, pollutants. I'm not gonna say cool, I'm gonna say pollutants. I stand by the robot fish, honestly. In case of a scuffle, these fish can actually self-repair themselves, so. Yeah, it's on. It's on, pollution. Pollutants. Number nine, drones. Sure, drones can deliver packages now right to your front door. And sure, they can fly through a bowling lane in cinematic fashion. But could drones also be so advanced that we're mistaking them for alien aircraft right now? Back in the early 60s, the CIA had this secret program called Project Aqualine. And this was so advanced, dare I say, even for the 60s. They would use small drones with a low radar cross section, a little camera, all that fancy spy gadget stuff, and it was disguised as a bird. Yeah, it was a little bit obvious though. The first prototype, it weighed over 100 pounds, so you could hear it coming. It was this massive eagle looking drone bird, but the only way to catch it was to fly it into a net, which most of the time broke something every single flight. Now cut to 2022. Yeah, there's for sure a drone pigeon out there watching us doing something. Olivia did a list on hidden cameras, so birds, drones, probably, I don't know. There's probably a lot of cameras out there. I sense there's one near me right now. Number eight, autonomous AI. Oh, this one is very scary. Put my phone in an airplane mode for this one. Harvard professor Nick Bostrom, he made this hypothetical scenario. Just a fun hypothetical from a Harvard professor. We love those. Where in this scenario, a paperclip company, they made some sort of AI robot technology that is tasked with one single goal. Creating as many paperclips for said company. And now in theory, that would be amazing if this ever happened, right? right? But there's now so many paper clips that we don't know what to do with them, right? Paper clip stocks are higher than they've ever been, but now something has happened. This robot, which only knows paper clips and only knows that it's supposed to create as many as paper clips as possible, obviously takes its job a little seriously, being a, you know, AI robot machine. So much so that this robot starts to take other resources, resources that we need to survive in order to continue making paper clips. See what I'm saying? So Nick Bolstrom is showing us a hypothetical. The hypothetical where the paperclip guy from your desktop, he's now gonna turn into Ultron. Could this happen? Is this a possible scenario? I don't know. Now I'm thinking about it. Now I'm looking at Siri and Alexa. Is that gonna happen? Is she gonna start making paper clips? I hope not. We don't need any of those anymore. I think it's done. Number seven, robot vacuums. The Roomba, huh, he's so fun, right? Let's put a red solo cup on him and try and get the ball in. So fun, what could possibly go wrong with this robot? Just wait until Dyson give these things a set of legs. We're fucked. it's over. Robot vacuums are programmed to hover around without the need of human assistance. It's cute, they bump into stuff and they scare the out of your family pet. It's great. The robots are small devices which can carry out cleaning related tasks such as vacuuming and mopping eventually, right? These new ones can actually go and drop off a load of garbage and then continue cleaning. It's kind of crazy. Every day, that's their job now, I guess, forever. Again, it's great, but when is this thing gonna decide to drop the mop and bucket, you know? And then just come towards you. Start spraying Windex all over your face. I have no idea, I'm terrified, let's move on. Number six, virtual reality. I just saw the trailer for PlayStation 5's VR2. I, like, where are we, what, what, what year is this? I'm not ready for this. The older VR systems, they currently are making me so dizzy. I can't imagine where this is going. With eye tracking, no way. People are legitimately worried about VR and its effects. People have raised concerns over how this sort of technology might actually affect our brains long-term and more specifically, our memories. Yeah, there's worries that younger people using these sorts of technologies, they might end up creating these sorts of, dare I say, false memories under the influence of virtual reality. Know what I mean? You think back to a family vacation, but it's really like Tony Hawk VR just standing there. You're like, wait a minute, was that my dad or was that Tony Hawk? This, however, is something that needs a lot more study to confirm if these sort of effects really do exist and are happening. But while we're trying to figure that out, PlayStation's like, yeah, here's another one. It tracks your soul and what you're thinking of. It's like, no. Do these effects outweigh the benefits of VR? I don't know. VR is really fun, but after an hour, I feel like I'm in an episode of Black Mirror. It's too much. Number five, 3D printing. This is something that did not exist when I was younger at all, 
in any way. You know what I mean? Like VR was kind of an idea. The dude from Monster Zinc was wearing it, so like it was kind of embedded in my mind. We had those spider markers that connect the dots, those 3D gooey markers, but that's it. We wouldn't have any of this shit. Now people are printing swords, like medieval swords in their basement. What's happened? It's become increasingly popular, 3D printing. They're becoming more accessible. Unlike the traditional printer, 3D printers are able to print and create three dimensional objects in any like way, shape or form. It's really baffling. People are making infinity gauntlets in like two hours flat. Connor, um, Connor, one of our hosts here, he actually 3D printed a Pokeball. Shows me a real thing that he printed. I'm like, oh, it's the future. Thanks, man. This technology is continuing to advance and some printers now have capabilities of printing out food and even some types of organs. So that's lovely. We love that. But where is it gonna go? You know what I mean? This technology feels good, but again, so does the first 20 minutes of every Black Mirror episode. So imagine 3D printing another you and it just, I don't know. Now I'm getting ahead of myself. Number four, smart TVs. Survivor, season 42, episode five. That's it, that's where we're at now. Remember TV guides? Ask your parents about TV guides. Actually, you know what? Ask Alexa about TV guides in front of your parents and then watch their faces react. TV guides were the worst. I actually didn't know this was something that people were worried about until this exact point. I mean, I love my smart TV. It seems easy, it's got all the apps, I can speak into the microphone instead of doing the you know horrible search function on every app. I don't need cable, it solves every problem, and the picture is lovely. <laughs> but not everybody feels so keen on this new and improved technology. The smart TV is a little too smart, who knows? Apparently smart TVs are so smart that they're also keeping tabs on users' viewing habits, which people are worried will somehow allow criminals to hack in and steal their personal information, like passwords for Netflix, all that stuff. Fair, more than fair. There might be something in there that I'm missing, but do I wanna find out? No, I don't know. Imagine somebody hacking in your TV in the middle of the night, Anonymous just appears with a hoodie. He's like, you forgot to set your alarm. I'm like, oh my God. This is so scary. Number three, self-driving cars. Again, if you own a Tesla, first of all, must be nice, awesome, keep it up. But secondly, comment down below how often you actually use the self-driving feature. I imagine it's scary at first, no? Like just taking your hands off the wheel, no more 10 and two, that's so bizarre, that's, that's not human. I don't trust some actual real life humans driving enough, cause you know, they'll fall asleep behind the wheel, let alone people who just wanna take a nap and they're in this spaceship that's just gonna go from A to B. I can't imagine trusting a piece of new technology this much to just fall asleep in a car and go to work. That's, in, that's insane. The issue isn't with the self-drive feature per se. I mean, there are plenty of reasons why this step makes sense. There are also some things that are a major concern for self-driving cars and you know, being able to sleep while you're at the wheel. One of the most debated and truly one of the biggest questions surrounding this is, will a self-driving car prioritize its driver or passenger over the operator or the other car? Like, how is it gonna adjust to a real life accident? You know what I mean? I saw one video where Tesla just ran into a building and didn't know what it was even doing. It's crazy. You couldn't even hear it coming too. All these electric cars, they're so quiet that you actually can't hear them coming. It's terrifying. And not just over the road user, but at the expense of other road users. You know what I mean? Like, how does a Tesla react to a non-Tesla just whipping into its frame? It's kind of chaotic. I've seen many videos on Reddit where it doesn't, uh, doesn't work out. Number two, first photo of a black hole. Now at first glance, you may think this blurry photo of a distant star or something like that, but compared to some shots that we have of nebulas today, this black hole photo doesn't seem that impressive at first, especially now with James Webb whipping out these 4K photos of galaxies from our past. I don't even know what he's showing us. I don't wanna talk about him. But back in 2019, around 200 scientists from 20 different countries all put their big brains together in order to finally get a photo of a black hole at the center of the Messier 87 galaxy that's 55 million light years away. But just how do you do this? How do you get a photo of something that sucks in light? This was supposed to be impossible, right? But now here we are in the future getting Polaroids of matter sucking things somehow in the galaxies. The Event Horizon Telescope shows us the dark center and it's this hole that swallows up matter. It looks like a ring almost that you can maybe look around. But the light that we see in this photo, these radio waves that are represented, that's coming from all around the black hole. It's behind it, it's in front of it. It would actually be a impossible to see and make out in real life. But after the team made a virtual telescope the size of the Earth, they were able to do so. They were able to see the radiation surrounding the black hole. This is something we barely understand in the science world today, and the fact that we can see a blurry photo, or any photo nonetheless, is way more than we deserve. James Webb though, he's still coming in. He's showing us some ugly stuff out there. And finally, number one, Google Glass. Smart eyewear technology. Okay, ideally, when it's worked out, these pairs of shades can make you look a little bit like Tony Stark, and you can feel like him too. It's able to display information and content in a similar way a smartphone does, only it's hand-free, you know? It's voice control, hence the Tony Stark 
feeling. Wearing heads up displays like Google Glass or even VR now or later, these can contribute to eye fatigue and may cause visual confusion and also memory problems down the line. You know, imagine getting a pop up in the middle of your kid's first birthday. That's it, your whole memory's ruined. I've been your host, Taylor McWaters. Comment down below any tech that you're afraid of. I'll name my three right off the hop VR, smartphones, and self driving cars. I'm not gonna those anymore, really. That's it, I'm tapped out. See you next time, a most amazing top 10. Bye. <laughs> I'm like, number 10, this box you're watching me on. Here we go. Uh, oh, let me get some more air for this. <clears throat> Got a nice Ultron joke coming in at 9 a.m. Man, it's crazy not talking all morning, waking up, and then coming in here and being like, smash that like button. I'm like, Jesus. I'm like, just awake all of a sudden. Will he sneeze? Will he sneeze? Vote down below. <clears throat> nope. <laughs> It's got distracted. I thought, like, Olivia tried VR one time. She came over and when we first met, she tried VR and immediately got so sick. She was so dizzy. Couldn't do it, man. I was playing Beat Saber, just chopping it up. She was like, man, this guy's cool. And then she tried it and she was like, just immediately couldn't, couldn't do it. She has vertigo though, so it's probably that. Oh, this is perfect, actually. This, this is great. Can I just go back a little bit here? Ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, 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 uh. Clear cock as I sleep out the wheel. Uh, 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 uh.